Hello, I'm Susan Woods of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. Please visit www.asksusanwoods.com to learn more about my services. So, are you ready to reinstate the 501c3 status for your nonprofit organization? Perhaps your status was revoked because you did not file the appropriate form 990 information return for three consecutive years. That's okay. You can always reinstate your status. Again, I'm Susan Woods. Since 2010, I completed a Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption for private clients in 17 different states. My clients trust me to transform their nonprofit vision into reality and I'm honored to have that privilege. I really enjoy completing the initial and reinstatement application process for my clients because it allows me to have a positive and indirect impact on communities I would never visit in person across the United States. When clients hire me to complete their initial and reinstatement application packets, I try my very best to exceed their expectations. My approval rating from the Internal Revenue Service is 100%, which is a testament to my dedication to providing high quality services. Don't allow your revocation to frustrate you. We can reinstate your 501c3 status by working together. Please allow me a few moments to explain the steps that I use to help my clients reinstate their 501c3 status for their nonprofit organizations so that they can continue offering the valuable community services that they've offered in the past. The first thing we do, I schedule a one hour phone consultation or you reserve a one hour phone consultation with me or 30 minutes, whichever is best for your schedule to just tell me what happened. How did you lose your 501c3 status? Because during that consultation, I will determine what type of reinstatement process is best suitable for your nonprofit organization. But there are four options, four reinstatement options. And during our consultation, we will discuss and decide upon which option is best for you to use for reinstatement. So the consultation is very, very important. Once we have decided upon the consult once we have decided upon the option that's best for you to reinstate your nonprofit, then I will send you a contractual agreement that outlines everything that I will do for you in our attempt to get your 501c3 status reinstated. In the contractual agreement at the very bottom will be a link for you to process your payment for my services. And I use PayPal to process the payment. My fee is $1,000 to complete a reinstatement application packet for my clients. However, I am offering a 50% off sale starting Black Friday, November 29th and ending on December 31st, you can have a 50% off or take advantage of a 50% off discount for my services, which means you will only pay $500. Now, once you have processed the fee, 50, the $500 fee, then I will send you an application completion timeline. That timeline lets you know when you can expect to receive different documents that are a part of the reinstatement application packet.
For example, in the timeline, I will let you know when you will receive your bylaws, when you will receive your narrative description of activities. All of the documents will have a date in the timeline. The timeline will also include dates in which I will expect to receive feedback from you for each document. I ask for 15 business days to complete a reinstatement application packet for my clients. So 15 business days, if we work together, we can have your reinstatement application completed. Normally for an initial application packet, people who are just starting out with starting a 501c3, never had one before, I will file the Articles of Incorporation for them. That's not relevant for you because if you've had a nonprofit organization before and it was revoked, your status was revoked, you still should have your Articles of Incorporation on file with the Secretary of State's office. But what I will do for you, I will confirm that the status of your Articles of Incorporation is still in good standing. So I will go to the Secretary of State's office in the state in which you operate to just verify and confirm that your Articles of Incorporation are in good standing because if they are not, then your reinstatement application will be rejected by the IRS. Again, another thing, your employer identification number letter, the EIN letter. You should have your EIN letter still intact. The only thing with your EIN or employer identification number is it is not, you can't use it right now because your status has been revoked. So you can't use that EIN number because if you do use it, to try to secure tax deductible donations or grants or anything like that, that is considered fraud while you are in a revocation status. But we still need to include a copy of that letter in your reinstatement application packet for the IRS to review and consider your reinstatement request. Your bylaws, I will complete your bylaws. And if you already have a copy of your bylaws from the past when you originally applied for status, then I will revise those bylaws to make sure that they meet the current standards or requirements from the IRS. I will revise your narrative description of activities to make sure that they still reflect the services that you want to provide. Perhaps you may want to add additional services, this would be the great time to do that. The conflict of interest policy, I will make sure that it is updated and includes the most current uh, information that the IRS requires. I will update your fundraising activities description to make sure that it clearly describes the type of fundraising activities you plan to use to raise money for your nonprofit organization. And I will also revise or update your financial data report to reflect the information that is current regarding your financial data for your nonprofit organization. And finally, I will complete the Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption using the option, the reinstatement option that we decided would be the best option for your nonprofit organization. Now I'm not going to go into defining the four reinstatement options because that could take longer than I would like to use for this video message, but I will thoroughly explain those four different options in our consultation so that you can decide which reinstatement option is best for you to reinstate your 501c3 status, but there are four options. Option number one is called streamlined retroactive reinstatement option. Streamlined retroactive reinstatement. Option two is called 
reinstatement within 15 months of revocation. Option three is reinstatement after 15 months of revocation. Option four is called postmark date reinstatement application. So again, those are the four options that we will discuss to help you decide which option is best for you to apply for reinstatement. And then I will complete the Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption that falls in line with the option that you choose. Again, we will collaborate. I'm not doing this on my own. I've heard horror stories of people who have hired consultants to complete their application packets, either initial application packets or reinstatement application packets, and they never heard from the consultant. They weren't even sure that, cons that the consultant completed their application packet at all. They just assumed that they were, that they did complete it. I don't do that. We collaborate, we work together, and I complete three revisions of each document, if necessary, of each document until you are satisfied with the way those documents look, until you're satisfied that the documents reflect what you want them to reflect. I make sure of that. And then those documents are sent to you. I send those documents to you after I prepare them according to IRS guidelines. I prepare your application packet for you according to IRS guidelines. And then I send the packet to you for you to mail to the IRS yourself. And then that way, you know that the application packet has been completed correctly and you know that you have mailed the application packet and you are not relying on me to mail the application packet and wondering if I did it or not. That's very important. Now, once you have mailed your application packet to the Internal Revenue Service, the Internal Revenue Service will send you an acknowledgement letter within three weeks. Within three weeks, they should receive, you should receive an acknowledgement letter from the IRS letting you know we've received your application packet and we are ready to process the application packet. Now, the IRS asks for six months to process an application packet. During that six month time frame, if the IRS reaches out to you through a letter, that would be their first interaction through a letter requesting additional information, requesting uh, answers to questions, whatever the case may be, you let me know. You give me permission to follow up with the IRS on your behalf to answer any questions that they have about your reinstatement application packet to provide additional information. That's what I do for you at no additional charge. Those are my follow-up services that I provide. I am on your side. I am on your team. I am partnering with you until you receive your determination letter from the IRS. It's called a determination letter, but it is a letter that says you are approved to operate your 501c3 nonprofit organization. That's the determination letter. Once you receive that letter, then I remove myself from your team to allow you then to operate your nonprofit organization according to the application packet we submitted. That's how the process works. These are the things that I do for you. And again, I'm offering a 50% off discount for Black Friday sale, which is $500, you save $500 from November 29th all the way through December 31st on the initial application and on reinstatement applications. 
don't miss this opportunity to get all of these services that I just described for $500. Now keep in mind, the IRS charges $600 to process the Form 1023 application for recognition of exemption standard version. I only use the standard version. I do not use the 1023EZ. In my opinion, the 1023EZ is something that you should seriously, seriously, seriously think about before you use it. Make sure you understand what you are saying when you complete the 1023EZ. I do not use it. I'm not going to get into all of my personal grandstanding about the 1023EZ. I'm passionate about it because I know that it's shorter. I know that it's cheaper, but that doesn't mean it's the best. And I leave it at that. I hope that you will take advantage of this opportunity to get your 501c3 status reinstated so that you can resume offering your services next year. Reserve your consultation today. Go to www.asksusanwoods.com and you will see a tab called Reserve Consultation. Click on the Reserve Consultation tab. You will read all of the requirements to reserve a consultation. The primary one would be to make sure that you are able to talk in a quiet environment when we talk. And then you will be taken to a page that shows my calendar and the calendar shows the vacancies, the vacant um, time frames that are available for you to reserve your consultation. So please take advantage of this opportunity so that you can start making a difference in your community again. If you have any questions, please call me directly at 704-968-2769. That's 704-968-2769. Again, I am Susan Woods of Susan Woods Nonprofit Solutions. I thank you so much for your time and have a good day.